So there's there's three groups there, the competence or technical skills, the driver motivation and the relationships. And what we can see is two candidates, candidate A and candidate B. And also there's two in those two columns, there's um, what's been evidenced, how they've performed currently and what we think their potential, this is a best guess, what we think their potential will be in, say, six months' time. Because we may have a candidate who doesn't have the skills yet, but what we need to do as part of our process is if someone needs is going to need some training, we're going to need to show them how to do some stuff. Part of that uh, hiring process should be, let's just spend 20 minutes me showing you how to do something in this partic particular area. And let's see how we get on. Do you pick it up quickly? Are you picking it up and then doing it? Or are you just going, yeah, I think I've got that, or just looking blank? So you get a good sense. Does this person learn quickly and ask intelligent questions? And I enjoy training them, and they work well being taught by me. So there's what we've evidenced, how well they did it now, and the potential how we, well we think we'll do it in six months' time. So... So would example, that be sorry, Martin? Would, would that be part of the interview process, or or might that be part of a task that you would send over? How how might you ever do? Okay, so, so let's go back a little bit before I talk through the spreadsheet in detail. I try and do this um, testing to find out have they got the skills in three phases. The first is a quick filter before I really spend too much time engaging with them say, for example, like the application process or how I ask them to make contact should filter out some of those easier skills to filter. There's then a second where what I would typically do is have a, let's see how we get on. Let's have a chat with each other about what we're both after, what you're looking for, what I'm looking for. Let's get to know each other. That should start to test some of the relationship skills and the drive skills by what time we've set it, et cetera. And none of these have to be long. You know, that can be just a 20-minute conversation, half-hour conversation. And then the third and final stage should be, let's do some work together. Let me get to know you. You know, if I want to come back to you, having seen some other candidates, you're the one person I like most, let's do some stuff together. And that's when I'll go through more of the technical skills, but it will reveal teamwork skills, personality skills as well. So I kind of tend to do it in three stages. And that kind of final testing work together stage doesn't need to be more than an hour. But just remember, you wouldn't marry someone based on a phone call, based on a Zoom interview. You know, you'd want to spend some time with them, seeing how you really get on in real life. And, and an employee or getting someone to work with you can be a bit like a marriage. We can also spend more time with our work colleagues than we do our partners. Absolutely. So... Um, so to come back to your question, can you remind me what it was? Um, it's how you would evidence this current and potential. So I see that's yeah. made it much clearer now, hasn't it? So obviously the the application process, you know, that's if, if they haven't adhered to your processes, that then that's that you already know that they're one step ahead. Um, you've had you've had a chat. Um, which you know presumably will have some of these points but when you get to this let's do some work together within that hour if you're spending you know 20 minutes half an hour you know teaching something simple or you know whatever it is that is important within that it might be test if it's relationships it might be just testing questions you know if it's yeah there's a there's a whole host it depends again doesn't it going back to whether it is the the competencies, the technical know-how, the attitude or the relationships as to what you would concentrate on during that time. Yeah, so so just to recap the core process, you take your, your competence, your drive, your relationships, you write five to seven, three to five to seven, mission critical skills, and then you think about the tests that are going to be in each phase. So you've written down some tests that should show most of this, and, and this list gives you a reminder to say, will these tests evidence all those things. It could be you've got four or five tests that are going to reveal most of these qualities, and that's what you're always looking for, tests that show more than just one thing. And then the point of the spreadsheet is to score them out of 10. How well did they perform? 10, they couldn't have been better. Five, they were just good enough. Zero, they, they showed no evidence of that skill or ability or quality. So we're, it's making us not just be emotional and go, well, I really liked them. 
is make us go, what have I evidenced? What have I really seen? I don't want to fantasize here because that'll get me in trouble and I've seen it so many times. So we then put the schools down and the spreadsheet averages out for each area where you, you get the average score out of 10. And then you get an average score of all three areas at the bottom. So that candidate gets a score out of 10. And this is where we bring in the ABC, et cetera, player system. I think most of us or many of us have heard of A players, B players, C players. Obviously, A players are the best. B players are almost there. C players are quite good. D players maybe less so. Now, I want to um, bring an idea from psychology into this and put another filter on top because there's a rule of thumb in psychology that if you took the whole population and sent them for therapy, a third will get better, a third will stay the same, and a third will get worse. Why will a third get better? Because essentially they have that um, leadership in them that self-leadership, if they need something needs changing or doing, they take full ownership and responsibility for it. They go, if something needs doing, it's down to me. I'll get it done. And that means if they're in therapy, they go, if that needs changing, it's up to me. I need to do it. And your A players will do that. And your B players are pretty close to it. B players want to be the best. They're just not quite there yet. Your C players, they're the ones who won't change. They're so loyal, they're reliable, but they need quite a lot of hand-holding. But typically, when you want something really driven with initiative, they'll talk about it. They'll want to do it. Do it. They'd love to do it. They'll talk some more about it. They're your friend down the pub who's talked about traveling the world for 10 years but never gone. Meanwhile, your A player has planned it for a year, gone around the world, got back, and your C player says, it's a real shame you didn't go to Kathmandu. <laughs> they're your kind of like armchair critics. Your C minuses and below, they're the people who often through unfortunate circumstances in their past to become the victims or dependents of life. If you paid me more, if you gave me a better computer, if it wasn't such a rainy day, if only the government had done something different, I could have got the job done. And they're the ones who will always need you to handhold them. It will always be your problem that they didn't get it done. So we really want to avoid C minuses or D players because they're in that category who are going to drain us the, the, the most. Wow, the, <laughs> that's um, uh, really kind of enlightening, isn't it? Because I think that there are times when, as a, say, entrepreneur, you think in a certain way and there can be frustrations when other people perhaps don't do that. And even, you know, perhaps your friends and your family and, and all of those kind of things. And that kind of gives a really good indication that, you know, some people are just never going to, change like that there's there's no motivation for them to do that to change but it doesn't mean they don't have a place um it doesn't mean they're bad or wrong or anything like that it's just different um and that yeah really interesting and that's why both hiring and going forward we need to score their potential too we need to take a best guess because if someone isn't performing at an a or isn't scoring at an a right now um I, I want to build this into how we review and develop and train people. But we do need to look at what's their potential because we need to give everybody a chance. Not if we haven't hired them. We need to get people who look like they're an A now or will be in six months. But down the line, we need to give everybody a chance. If we had hired someone, we need to go, everybody needs a chance to step up. And I kind of work on the three strikes and out. Let's talk about it. So so maybe, is that clear enough for now? And then can we'll I get just, on to how you develop and train people. Yeah, is there anything just, more on the hiring? Yeah, just ask one more question on this. So on this particular model that we've got here, we've got candidate A that is kind of an A player now and will kind of always be an A player, whereas candidate B is a B player currently, um, but you believe has got a potential for an A star. So in this scenario, who would you be looking too high is it somebody who's who's you know so I suppose again it depends on the role but you know you've got basically a really steady eddy there or somebody who's maybe very aspirational um and again I suppose when it comes down to like hiring virtual assistants um especially in a in a property world I know my very first lady that I hired I got on with her because she was quite entrepreneurial but it meant that after um I think it was just over a year, she went and, and started her own business. 
nothing wrong with that. That's fantastic. But it might be something that you have to consider for the future. Is it better to have a really great steady eddy rather than this kind of, you know, but if you want them to grow with you and really help push your business, then maybe they could come with you. And and that depends on the, you know, the overarching factors. But the example you've just given was exactly what this reflected. I know it's a sort of a, a hidden example, but the two candidates who were genuine in this, that was exactly that. One was going to hit the ground running harder and faster, but probably sooner was going to be wanting to go off and do their own thing. But the second was less ready now, but was very steady, very bright, very determined, and would almost certainly want to stay with the job long term for as long as possible but was very meticulous in how they did things. They were a slower learner, but very thorough, really trusted pair of hands. So long-term, candidate B potentially would be the better bet unless you need someone now who's right up to speed and ready to go. So in the end, you always have to weigh these things up, what's right for you and what's right for them as well. Yeah, I love that. And I...